guys. Cliff Terracuso, president of Prospect Wire, back at it again, man. This is going to be a fun one. I got my man from Dirtbag Nation, Kirk McNabb. Kirk? Thanks as always, Clipper, and uh, welcome back, PW Dirtbags. Great to have you here for this uh, episode, and hey, thanks for always following us and uh, sending in your comments and, and your show requests and, and everything else that goes with it, and keep sending in those uh, college recru recruiting uh, inquiries as well. It's a big part of why we're here. So anyways, uh, hey, yeah, just like Cliff said at the top, uh, we got a good one here today, and a uh, little bit of international flavor. Got a little Canada in the house. You got a little U.S. with Clippy T, and uh, we got some Bahamas with with uh, our guest today, uh, Jerron Sands. So uh, welcome to the show, Jerron. And uh, hey, what's happening down in uh, your part of the uh, world? Hey, thank you so much, guys, for having me on, man. Dirtbag Nation, you know, Prospect Wire. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here today, man. We're, we're, we're down there on the lockdown, lock, lockdown for the weekend, but um, we're, we're starting to see a little bit of baseball, you know, guys starting to get back out, you know, and swing the bat a little bit. But it's tough down there, man. It's tough right now. These guys are excited to get back out, to get back on the field, you know, and, you know, but everything takes time. But we're getting there slowly. Yeah, you know, same as us up here for sure. So, hey, how did, uh, you know, you, you and Cliff got some unique stories. So uh, let's let's yes. dive in and start right there. Uh, how did that connection <laughs> come back to be? Well, I've, I've known Cliff for a while now. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've known him for years, upon years. Um, First of all, from from Palm Beach time, played at I played at PBCC, um, Palm Beach Community College at that time under Craig Giroux, and I think Cliff was over at um, PBA, and you know he did a little bit of recruiting. Um, he tried to recruit me a couple of times, tried to, um, almost was successful, you know. But um, and then I went over to Nova, played over at Nova. Um, I I I was there right before Cliff came over there, but we stayed in contact. Um, he did some recruiting again um, over there. Always was a guy down in the Bahamas. And once we started our fast forward a little bit, once we started our our um, academy down here, you know, he was with the Rangers at the time, and he was one of the guys down here, like constantly. You know, when we talk about the Lucius Fox and we talk about the Jazz Chisholms, and you know, when the list goes on with those guys, he was the number one guy down here. Um, recruiting these guys. So he is, I want to say, an honorary Bahamian, if I can say that. Yeah. Everybody I, knows Cliff. So he's a great guy down there, man. He's welcome down there anytime. I mean, I mean, like, you know, being, you know, going down, you know, to, to the Bahamas and, and spending as much time as I have down there, like, you know, it was all about like, you know, getting to know the families that we've talked about, the makeup of, of the players and stuff. And, you know, spending the amount of time that I, I have, I mean, I've been down there, I mean, when my, I feel like my whole passport is just Nassau, 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 you know? And like, it's just the country, such a beautiful country, you know, like the players there are organic, like I've said, like, you know, the, you know, these guys are not taking any steroids, you know what I mean? These guys are, you know, these guys are organic players, man. So like you, you, there's projection all over the, all over the island, you know, what Jerron and, you know, his partner Albert Cartwright created their international elite. I mean, the players, like, love these guys, and they gravitate toward them, and, and like, they come out there and they train. Like, it's, it's not a place where just show up when you want. It's, like, it's structured. And, like, you know, when, when you go there and go scout, you know, you, you knew exactly that what you were getting. Like, it was going to be an organized atmosphere, and they would put you in contact with the players, and it was just – you know, it was, it was always a fun time. Like some of the best times of my life were in Nassau. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, I try to recruit Jerron. I try to recruit Albert, but you know, I lost out. But, you know, I, yeah, I, I got lucky to sign a lot of players from the Bahamas over my years as you know, covering the, uh, the country. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's exciting, man. I, I'm pumped. I'm jealous, actually. I'm not pumped. I'm <laughs> jealous about that uh, that story, a place I've never been. And uh, but uh, yeah, certainly uh, going to get to it at some point. So yes, yeah, sir. like talk talk to us about uh, the concept and the vision and and how you tie okay. it all in with Prospect Wire, John. Okay, well, um, you know, before we we always attended Prospect Wire events, um, always, and now that Cliff is over there, is even more. You know, up, you know. Once this, once we get through this, we're going to be attending a ton of those events um, down there. Hopefully, they can get some down there in Nassau as well. Um, but the academy, basically, you know, we 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 have 11, 12 year olds. You know, you come into academy at 11 or 12, 
Um, we have the whole school thing set up, you know, it's, it's, it's a homeschool curriculum based program in school, in an actual building. Um, you know, the kids do their, we have a national exam called the Bahamas Junior Certificate of Education. We make sure these guys, are, they pass that. Um, and then most importantly, the SATs, um, because, you know, not all kids are going to be signed or get drafted. So they have to be prepared for college as well. So, you know, we prepare them for the SATs and the ACTs. Um, our school runs from 7 a.m. until about 12.30, 1 p.m. And then we hit to the baseball field or to the beach or to the gym. Uh, we even incorporated yoga. Um, you know, we, we just try to get these guys as, as, as ready as possible, whether they're going to enter the professional ranks or they're going to enter uh, college. So yeah. that's kind of what we do here. Um, you know, like Cliff said, we take it very serious. Um, we, we go after the kids. The kids don't come to us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all around the Bahamas looking for talent, um, basically to bring into the academy. Um, we currently have about 30 kids. Um, in the past, boy, I've, we've, we've gotten about, I've been a part of about 26 guys in about five years being signed internationally. Um, so, you know, and this year we have about another four um, getting ready to go in once this pandemic is passed. And then the future is bright. You know, I was talking to Cliff um, a bit earlier about it, and the future is really bright down here. My younger kids are really, really good, and I'm excited. I'm just excited about it all. I mean, like, like Kirk, like, Earth, like you know, the Bahamas has always been like that, that territory that, you know, for scouting, it was, you know, guys would hunt there, but, like, they, you know, they were more comfortable, like, in other parts of, like, the world, you know, and, but then – there's probably about five or six or seven of us that constantly went in there and started picking off players. And, and now when Jerron runs a, you know, a workout, a two day showcase or a workout, there's 30 teams there. You know what I mean? Like they have to go because you don't want to miss out, you know, because there is potential future major leaguers, potential all-stars that are on the rise from the Bahamas, you know? So, and a lot of these kids are, you know, they sign when they're 16 years old and they're only like 19 years old now. Like, you, you don't know them no. yet, but, but you're going to know them. You know what I mean? And, and like, you know, moving on to that, Jerron, like, you know, baseball cloud, you know, with, with Kevin Davidson, you know, we, uh, yes, sir. we're all, we're all the same family here, you know, like, I mean, explain to, you know, to, to Kirk and the rest of and everybody else. I mean, like, you do have a baseball cloud account. You guys, yes, you guys are collecting data there. Yeah, yes, we are. In, in your batting practices, and you're sending it over to baseball cloud, and they're and they're like, you know, cleaning the data for you, holding onto that data for you. I mean, like, you know, to kind of talk about like that experience, like, you know, having me and you know, you know, Eric come on over and and, and speak to the families. I mean, like, let's talk about that for a second because that was pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's great, man. Being a part of that family is great. Baseball cloud, um, having the machine, you know, we collect the data. Um, and for me, you know, it's, it's, it's new, but it's really exciting for me to know that we're actually collecting these kids' data from such a young age. Um, and it was going to help us in, in the process as they get older. Um, you know, meeting Kevin Davidson, um, that, that was kind of cool. That was great. Um, you know, just meeting him and being able to talk with him, getting ideas from him, picking his brain, um, that, that was cool. And, you know, most recently, um, a few months back, you know, we had a baseball cloud down there, you know, talk with the parents. We had a parent night um, where we invited, you know, parents out to kind of understand data and how important it is for your kid to know his data. And, you know, and, and that was great, man. We, we, we made a makeshift. Sure Cage in, in a in my old high school auditorium, and we actually had the machine set up, and you know Cliffy T did his thing down there, and he was the man. He took full charge. We took swings, um, and every parent is so excited about it. Um, they want more. They want to know how to get more. We're, we're actually supplying it for them, so I'm I'm all excited um, for that. And here comes the pandemic, so you know we're on hold a bit, but we're still collecting data. That's the key to collect that data as much as you can. Yeah, without question, for sure. I mean, you can't help but be excited, and and that's what it is. It's you never stop evolving, right? If you can, never. if you lock in and, and be a part of this big, uh, big machine, um, it, it's a no-brainer. It's not something that needs to be forced. That's the whole problem. Like, 
right. it, it's just the way it's going to be. Yep. It, it, they've done the work. They've done all that and hard work, not easy work. <laughs> they rolled their sleeves up and, and, and got in where they needed to with the MLB level. So now everybody under that umbrella, colleges, high school, international academies, and so on and so forth, can take advantage of it. And why wouldn't you take advantage of it? They've, they've partnered up with tremendous people and, yeah. and you know, on, on the data and the technology world. And then you've got Prospect Wire, you got Prospect Wire Latin America, obviously, and that. And we quite mm -hmm. often uh, brainstorm, uh, Cliff and I, about how to bring it into Canada and, and just continue the expansion, if you will. And, you know, and that'll happen over time, but exactly right. Um, you no, know, let's let's talk about some of the players that you've sent on, uh, Jerome, because that's hey, when you're on <laughs> you left the playing side, as you know, and we're on yep. the coaching side, that's yep. that's a rush, right? That's excitement. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. So, so um, if we take it way back in the beginning, uh, first kid that, that I've been a part of signing in uh, with the Texas Rangers was Dale Davis. Um, he's a kid, you know, um, in 2014. Uh, first signed 2014, um, was a kid that graduated college, didn't get much of a chance where he was, and he came back home, and that when we were kind of started off. So um, pretty good ball player, um, played for two years, and, and then he moved on. Um, I think he's in, in uh, Georgia somewhere working now, but then we move on to some exciting kids. Uh, we had the Lucius Fox, um, 2015. We had uh, Jazz Chisholm, 2015. They're the two top guys that we had. Lucius Fox being the, how should I put it, Cliff? He was the highest paid uh, international player in the history of baseball. Wow. So imagine, you know, my first time coming out of the gate, you you hit the, you know, the yeah. ceiling that, that everyone thinks is going to happen every year. So, yeah. you know, it was it, it was tough. You know, Lucius Fox being that guy, he's now at East of the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, he's on the 40-man roster right now. Um, and then we have Jazz Chisholm, the electric jazz. We call him Jazz um, Electric. He's with the Florida Marlins, 40-man roster as well. Um, he probably will be the starting shortstop up there pretty soon, um, hopefully. Um, and then we go on to another big kid, Christian Robinson. You know, he was a big guy um, in 2017 that signed. Um, Christian Robinson is with the Diamondbacks. He's the number one prospect for Arizona right now. Um, an entire organization. Jazz is the number three for the Marlins, and I think Lucius is like 10 um, right now. Um, we have about eight or nine prospects um, coming from the Bahamas for their prospective teams, and we have two top 100 players, yeah. which, is Jazz, which is Jazz Chisholm and Christian Robinson. I know a lot of folks don't really recognize that but you know for the 25 23 guys that we have in professional baseball we have two top 100s and we have about nine prospects so I mean, it's, 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 cra it's crazy i mean like, yeah. it, it, i mean for being such a small island i mean then like these guys go out there and they hunt players and you know what, what Jerron and albert bring to the table is that they know what they're looking for you know what i mean like these guys are baseball like lifers they're animals so like when they're out there watching kids like, you know, play at such a young age, they know the tangibles of what they want to bring into their program, you know? So like, you know, one of the common denominators that I kind of figured out was that these are great kids. I mean, great character kids, like kids that, you know, you get around, you're like, man, like, it's a really, you know, I mean, you know, we, we, nobody really wants to, you know, throw a 70 or an 80 makeup, you know, on the grading scale, like on, on, you know, on players, but I mean, but like, there's a lot of 60s and 70s coming out of the freaking the Bahamas, man. I mean, like, these guys are awesome kids. I mean, respectful and, like, care and grind. But I draw on, I mean, like, you mentioned something there about, like, earlier on, like, you know, it's it's always, you know, like, like in the Bahamas, they're athletes, and most most times in scouting, people say, man, you're not going to get faster. Like, no way. Like, what the, kid, <laughs> what the speed is. What's the secret sauce you guys have down there that all your guys get faster? So, like, it happens there. So, give it to us. Without giving <laughs> the, key, the key word, the key word, Cliff, was the secret sauce. Okay. That's the key word, the secret sauce. <laughs> um, we, we, we work hard at track. I mean, most of the guys, they run track uh, growing up um, in high schools. You know, track is probably our number one sport in the Bahamas. Um, you know, if we look at it now, we have, like, 
world number ones in track and field. Shawnee Miller, she's number one in women's. Um, you know, we have a guy, uh, Stephen Newbold, number one men's uh, four quarter milers. You know, um, we, we just, we, we always was into the track world. You know, a guy like me, you know, people would consider me be able to run, but I am not really that fast. You know, when you look at guys like, Christian Robinson, and you look at guys like Josh Chisholm, guys running like 6'2s, 6'3s, 6'1s, Anthony Seymour. When you have these guys running, those guys can also go on the track and run as well. You know, most of the guys have track backgrounds. Um, speaking of Antoine Richardson, you know, for me, he still is the fastest guy I've ever seen from the mom or some. I don't think I've seen it faster than him. And, you know, he made it to the big leagues, um, you know, with the Braves and the Yankees. Um, just out there, he's the guy that scored a winning run for Derek Jeter in his last at bat. So he was on second base, um, and he was the guy that actually scored that run. And Jeter actually said if anybody else was running, he would have been out. But because Antoine was running, you know, he was able to get in there. But um, Antoine would have been a easily, easily a world class sprinter. Um, you know, so that that's the key. You know, running, running in high school, we run from elementary school. Everyone runs track. You find out who the track guys are and you put them on the track. So now, you know, part of what I do, the mediocre guys that run track would be super fast in baseball. So you bring them over to baseball at a young age. Smart. And, and, and then you got your fast guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. another another fun thing is, uh, you know, Jaron, since you're so involved, I mean, like, I mean, just so the listeners can understand, how often are you on the cell phone talking to international directors or front directors? I mean, like, can we talk about how much, I mean, because people out there that want, maybe somebody wants to start their own academy overseas somewhere, explain to them how much phone time you have to you, you have to do. Listen, I, just to let you know, I spoke with my phone company today and I have like the highest of the highest plan like data plan or whatever you call it i have the highest one because i'm always on my phone i'm always talking international i'm always talking about the next player i'm always trying to make deals with teams and so um, to answer your question cliff i'm i'm like 70 percent of my day is done i mean that's crazy right, Kirk? yeah that's that's well you can just tell just sitting here watching you the two of you's dialogue and stuff like that there's just so many things that jump off the charts to me personally was one one talking about your track and field with the combination of baseball and that and as you know that's a always a hot topic button over here in uh, north america you know multi-sport uh, versus uh, getting right in there at 13 and being uh, single and I, you know what without question the bottom line is a pro athlete is an athlete Yes, that's that's what gets overlooked most times, right? They're athletes; they can pick up a golf yes. club and maybe not do real well the first game, but they can get it figured out. They'll get it. They'll get they it. They can figure out bas basketball if they're baseball. They can figure out, you know. But track and field—that's I love the coordination. I love the combination and the connection there. And that was one thing that jumped out for sure. And just to the to your demeanor and that. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you get associated a lot of the times over here with you know, well, they're from the islands and, and they're just laid back. They're, they're calm about it, but you're, you're not laid back. You're, you're, you're oh. calm about it, but you're very professional about it. And that's what really I want, I want you, uh, the audience, the PW dirtbags out there watching this right now is to really see that and feel that, especially if you're a coach out there watching this right now and, and just how Jerron's demeanor, you can tell he earns respect earns it doesn't demand it there's a big difference in that when we're out there coaching and starting these programs i think a lot like cliff was asking you about on the international things i don't know if there's competition down there or not in the bahamas maybe there is and, and if there is you know you guys have seen that a lot of these guys they want this they want hey i'm the coach i'm the founder of this organization it's me it's not jerron it's not cliff it's me and you don't bring that in, and that's that's cool. That's a really huge thing for sure. So, and and do you instill that with your players as well? That it's really a team, and it's we, even though maybe not everybody's going to get off the Bahamas. De definitely, that is the number one thing for us. Um, you know, I, I always the, the most important thing for us is um, the whole idea of this thing is to create, is to make, help help make productive citizens of the Bahamas. 
So the whole thing of the academy was to help kids that can't help themselves um, to one day, you know, get an education, uh, at least to get an education, to come back home, to help the country, to help their families, to, to be a productive citizen of the Bahamas. That's the number one thing. If you're good enough to go to the pros, then hey, that's, that's, that is great. But the number one thing is to, to try to get an education. Um, we're all about we. Um, education is huge. You know, we have some of the greatest teachers in the Bahamas in our program. Um, hats off to them. You know, I they do all the work. I'm just here, stand by watching what they do. But uh, some of the things are that you can't go on the field unless you get your schoolwork done. You know, just how it would be in university. You know, we have. You have to get up. You know, I don't. I don't call you and wake you up. You have to wake up yourself. So we try to get these kids to be responsible. Um, Cliff seen it. You know, we 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 get after them and we try to let them understand that. The world is out there. Um, you know, it's not fair. It's not always going to be fair, and you have to be ready for anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah I always have the uh, motto when I was coaching with uh, our guys. It, it was real simple, John. Yep. If you're early. You're on time. Yep. You're on time. You're late. And if you're late, yep. you're forgotten. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, yeah. you know, like, 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 you know, being here now with, you know, with Jaron, like, I, I, I start thinking back, Jaron, of like over the years of me covering the Bahamas and the time that we've spent together, you know, like, I mean, we, we've had some epic battles over players, you know, I mean, like, and that's just, you know, as well as, I, you know, as we are, we've battled for play. I'm like, you know, I, I need to sign this kid. He's like, Cliffy, I can't because there's three other teams that are going to, you know, I, I, what can I, you know, I, I'm, well, Gerard, I, I've been here the most. I know this kid. <laughs> he's a hustler. This is my guy. Like, you know, he's like, Cliffy, I can't. Cliffy, I can't. I'm just like, well, yes, you can. You know, <laughs> just, and at the end of the day, like, I mean, like I tell all those kids because I would go back out there and these kids, what people don't understand is like, whether they sign with another club or not, they all come back to I elite and practice with them. So like I see kids that I try to sign that are with another club and they come up to me, give me a hug and be like, Hey, how you doing? How's your family? The whole nine. And I'm, and I'm just like, and I wish them the best of luck. And I want them to be big leaguers and all stars. You know what I mean? Like that was a common, yep. like, that was, that's what's unique about what you guys do down there is that, I mean, you don't see that very often where like, you know, you have like seven or eight minor leaguers that are potential big leaguers all practicing with the, the young you know, like giving back. One thing I want to talk That's about John, is, you know, like it, it got a lot of pub the last couple of years is like the home run derby in Nassau yes. when I yes. lost balls for, into the ocean. Right? ESPN did a whole thing on it. Like, you know, uh, Bo Bichette was the home run derby champion. Can you talk about that a little bit, Jerome? Because, I mean, I know that's a big, you know. Yes, yes. The Home Run Derby is huge, man. Don't blink. Um, the face of the Home Run Derby is Lucius Fox and Todd Isaacs. Um, you know, two guys that have been a big part of their life in baseball. And, you know, they came up with this idea of, you know, having a Home Run Derby in the Bahamas, obviously to, to enhance the local, enhance local baseball, to get our locals out to, to see these guys perform um, at home. And the idea is, is, is we have a fort, you know, like a fort where they, where they back in the day, where they had uh, cannons and like a bottle, bottles from yeah. different countries. So it's, it's at a fort, Fort Montague, Aaron Nassar at the beach, where, you know, we build a platform, a uh, really nice platform. And, you know, these, we, we hit balls into the ocean. We put like a marker out there with a badge and, you know, we, we hit balls out there. So it's a normal home and derby. Uh, all, all of the professional guys, they hit, um, we, they, they bring down their friends. Bo Bichette won two years. Lewis Brinson from the Marlins won last year. Um, you know, we have Tristan McKenzie's a pitcher. The pitchers come and they kind of hang out with us. Um, Dante Bichette also come down and, you know, he throws BB to Bo and a couple of the guys. But the whole idea is, is, is to, to showcase our guys, to showcase our professional guys. Um, to let people know that hey, we're all from the Bahamas. Um, we're all we're all one family. It's unity, and you know this year we're gonna try to put it even bigger and better. Try to have a, a couple more big leaguers, but it's definitely something um, you know guys overseas would want to see and and get involved in. 
That's sick. That's sick. I love that stuff. Just, yeah. just outside the box thinking and, and looking. And uh, Cliff and I are always talking about that and looking for it for uh, the PW uh, Dirtbags Network and, and media and, and where we're going with this. So, you know what? It's awesome. It's awesome to hear those stories, Jerron. Um, I, I love your enthusiasm. I love your, I love your love for the game. And, and as we always say here, right, baseball's the conduit. That's what brings us all together, man. And, and talking baseball is awesome. It's, it's great no matter where you are in the world, where you're from, um, you know, and, and talking about it through uh, PW and, uh, and, and Baseball Cloud and, and just this whole platform is, is special because, you know, just I hope you listeners in the audience and then dirtbags out there are starting to feel how much we love each other. We, 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 we love this game. We love you. We love all of you out there in that. We can't appreciate it enough for you coming and weekly watching us and, and being a part of this and, and sending out those comments and, and those show requests. And, you know, hopefully today's one was uh, an outstanding one in the fact that, hey, you know what? Bahamas, maybe you didn't even know they played in the Bahamas. Right? That's right. You know, right. so... You know, one thing I do want to point out really quick, I think you said at the top of the show that uh, you were you were ahead of Cliff uh, at university. So I want to compliment you because uh, you've aged well. You've aged well. I, I would have thought you were Cliff's son. <laughs> no, stop it. No, no. He, he, he played – I was at Palm Beach Atlantic University as a as – a, and he was at Palm Beach Community College as a player. As a player so oh, okay. I tried right. to get him to come to PBA. He chose right. – Southeastern University. So that's the behind it. And then I eventually coached at Nova and, you know, um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's awesome. You know, just a a great friendship that I'm, I'm, I'm proud to, you know, call Jaron and Albert, my friends. I mean, I go out there and, you know, they welcome me. I mean, they welcome Robin. I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've, we spent some, uh, some good times together hanging out there and, you know, it's just a friendship that we'll never, ever, ever lose. And, and Jaron, just so you know, we had, uh, you know, the first show we did, right, Kirk, was the, uh, you know, where, where we, we, we actually taught people how to, like, take videos, the right way and wrong way of taking videos. And I went into my database, and the videos that we use of showing the proper way and the wrong way of doing it was at your field, at your account. Oh, wow. So if you go to the first episode, you'll see, be like, dude, I know that guy. That's just one of my players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. That makes man. sense now that you said it. So, hey, Jerron, we could go on and on. Uh, as you know, we only do the 30 minutes, and, and uh, but we, Cliff and I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. It was awesome. Um, I don't know if you have uh, highlights or, or people, you know, could reach out or, or look at a website that you have. Maybe you want to advertise that quick before we uh, call this one an episode. Um, no, I just, I just want to first say thank you guys for having me on. That's, that's the most important thing, um, Dirtbag Nation. Uh, prospect wire you know just thank you guys for for having me on um you know it just would like my, my like you said my partner albert um it's him and i we go hand in hand i mean we, we do it together it's not if it's not if it wasn't for him it would be no me and vice versa so you know i just want to say that um international elite sports academy uh look for us on the rise we're, we're coming um my players out there are players bahamian players bahamian baseball um it's on the rise so that's that's about it right there yeah your your, your, twi- your twitter handles and your and your your instagram handles um, well well no you just my, my website international elite sports academy um you can check us out there uh facebook no not any uh instagram not any um again it's it's it is how should i say it it's intentional it's intentional that I that I don't have those stuff. Um, I'm, I would be bombarded every single day. Um, but yeah, you, you can check us out. On the phone more? You'd be on the phone more than you are right now? I'd be on the phone more than I am. Um, you could leave comments on our Facebook page, International Elite Sports, um, or our website, International Elite Sports Academy, um, and, and we can connect there. Kirk, what is some- You could always... You, Sorry, you could always reach Clifford Prospect Wire. He knows how to get me. So Prospect Wire is just like a part of us. So we're, we're all good. That's no, awesome. yeah, baby. Kirk, yeah. What's, what's our handles, Kirk? Yeah, yep, you got them. You know where to follow us. It's at, at PW Dirtbags on uh, all of them. S- subscribe to us at uh, YouTube, obviously. And then the same handle at Facebook, 
Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Perfect. And uh, hey, nation, I mean, you can tell it, you can see it, you can feel it uh, from Jerron, uh, just another extension of the family and, and what's cool. happening with Prospect Wire. And, and you know what, it, it's, it's great to be here every week. It's great to be here with Cliff, obviously, first and foremost, but uh, you know what, we're doing what we love to do and it's because of you. So we can't thank you enough. Continue to follow us, continue to send those comments, continue to, to send those requests. Hey, if you know what, if you're a data company out there and you want to get talking to us, you know where to find us at the email, pwdirtbags at gmail.com. Send them right to us. I'll answer them personally. If you got a college recruiting profile that you want to talk about and stuff like that, get answered, get figured out how to get that done up right. Same thing, pwdirtbags at gmail.com, and we'll help you in that process, okay? That's what we're always here for. So that's my final thoughts, and uh, thank you for watching us and being a part of it. Cliff, yours? Man, this was awesome. I mean, the, uh, this is special because it's close to me. And I mean, thank you, Jerron, for coming on, man. And and it's, I mean, I'll see you. I'll see you soon, bro. I mean, one of these times, we'll, I'll be out there again. You know that. So. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Anytime, anytime. You guys can call on me. You're a great guest, man. Appreciate having you, Jerron. So, hey, dirt thank bags. You. you know what time it is? It's time to get up, get after it, and get dirty. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>